It's that time, it's that time, it is that time where I take questions from you, the Twitter followers of OTRS Central, and I give you my answers, which is still kind of weird that people actually care enough about my opinions that they ask me questions in order for me to answer them. Kind of a cool feeling, I can't lie. So I can tell you that this week the Q&A is going to be broken up into two separate videos. This one will be uploading on Tuesday night. Uh, the other one will be following up the next morning, Wednesday morning. Uh, just want to keep the video shorter. Um, and since I got so many questions, I want to be able to answer as many of the questions as possible. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. If you don't like it, that's too bad. So let's go ahead and get started with part one of this Q&A video. MC17 Clark says, you should subscribe to this channel and click the bell, what the hell, so that way you're notified of future videos. That's not his question, but that's what he says. And no, he didn't say, actually say it at all, but he would say it! What's your opinion of New Jack and the mass transit incident? Uh, that's a long time ago, over two decades ago now. That's crazy. Time flies. Um, that's a, that's a stupid thing. It was New Jack being an ass. I get it and I understand it. And I don't have a ton of sympathy for mass transit either. Like, there's this underage kid. He shouldn't have freaking been there. And then he's trying to dictate to a veteran, which is breaking basic wrestling protocol on so many different levels. Spotsy wants to get in and he's afraid to give himself color. Like, at the same token, he kind of got what was coming to him. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but it's true. So, like, mass transit was an idiot. And frankly, New Jack acted like an idiot in that circumstance, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, something we still remember and talk about over two decades later. Mounties Corner. Is WWE really open to cross-promotions? Only if they see it materially directly benefiting them, like the Evolve type of stuff, where there's somebody perceived as absolutely no threat to them, where they can also look at that as an opportunity to get a foot in the door to steal some of that talent. Um, but if you're talking about, like, real cross-promotion with, let's say, a New Japan or somebody like that, absolutely not. They, they have their heads at Titan Towers so far up their own asses, like, they have no interest in doing that at all. Um, MJ, make a podcast with Sting of now officially in AEW. How do you want to see him utilized in the company? I uh, certainly would like to see him in some type of role on television, although maybe not every week, but if you're going to do that, then... You know, make him an authority figure. It's the one thing you really don't have right now. And you can say, well, that's kind of tired and played out. Yeah, but it, it's also a wrestling thing. So if you made Sting, you know, that type, then, then you got to make him Crow, now Crow Sting. You got to make him Joker Sting. <laughs> and I could always use me some Joker Sting. <laughs> um... But otherwise, sporadic appearances, if he is intent on wrestling and he can actually be physically cleared to wrestle, then put him in tag matches, really protect him. Um, you're not going to feature or push him to an nth degree like you're trying to make him a star. You want to try and feature him in a big way that when he is featured, it is special because he is a star, if that makes sense. Mark Whalen, 67. How long should it take for the Tribal Chief to murder Kevin Owens at TLC? And who would you have a murder at Royal Love? Why is the Tribal Chief got to be a murderer now, man? <laughs> See how Mark Whalen gets followed by OTRS Central, and all of a sudden he just loses all sense of control. Um, I really wish he would squash Kevin Owens at TLC, frankly, but that's not going to happen. It's a TLC match, so you know what it's going to be going into it. Uh, who would I have him take on next if he was healthy? Samoa Joe. If not, maybe Jimmy Uso. Uh, Volfan0531, should they put the NXT title on Pat McAfee? There is only one answer to this question that is absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yes! Enough of the lames carrying the title. Pat McAfee can actually get heat. Pat McAfee can actually cut a promo. Pat McAfee is actually knowledgeable in how to be a character and project that character to the audience. He absolutely positively should be the NXT champion at some point in time. Sinner511, oh, excuse me, Volfan0531 is the second question. I saw a piece of Swiss cheese and it reminded me of Dino Bravo. Thoughts? Oh, we live! Bang, bang! He dead! 18 bullets! And he's dead! Dino Bravo. He's dead. Sinner51190 asks, 
The WWE focused on making stars instead of the brand, who from 2010 to 2020 would have been much bigger than what they were. First names I can think of are Ryback, Daniel Bryan, and CM Punk. How did they screw that one up? Because uh, they wanted to. And you could either say they had no clue what they were doing or they intentionally screwed it up. And you could make an equivalent argument for both. Uh, CM Punk, certainly. Ryback, absolutely. Wade Barrett, for sure. Alex Riley, like, I'd go on and on and on. Um, but some of that might just be more guys got buried or guys didn't get the opportunities. But, you know, you could certainly say that it's, it's clear over the past decade specifically that they've been much more focused on the brand than they have actually trying to build big stars. But I certainly think the Summer of Punk in 2011, once you went there, you had to go all the way there. That was a chance to make a mainstream star, and they missed out, missed the boat, and that's their ass. Johnny Brock's 23 asked, If Triple H took over the WWE and asked for your advice, what honestly would you tell him to do to make the product better? Uh, go to the chromosome doc and figure out a way where he can make a son. Um, <laughs> um, ask Triple H... Why would you try to only appeal to the hardcore fans? Um, I would also tell them, like, you got to pick four to six people that you look at that roster and you say, I'm going to throw everything behind them. Everything they do is going to have a purpose. Everything they do has a meaning. Everything they do has a significance. We're going to build up other folks to serve them up on a platter to them. We have got to get behind some people and we have actually got to get in the business of making stars again. That, that's the thing. You can talk about so many other things, but that's the thing. Find those four to six people and throw everything at them. Maybe four guys, two gals. Throw everything at them. Jack, have you ever considered doing roster reviews for WWE and AEW? Not really. Do people actually do that? Do people actually have interest in seeing those types of videos? Hmm. Daniel W. Clark. With the Impact versus AEW crossover, do you think wrestling is headed for a 21st century of the old NWA territory system where companies work together? Um, with them, yes. Some version of it, some form of it. I don't know if it'll be like a consistent, ongoing, all the time working relationship. Could I see it being done sporadically at different times? Yes. I would like to see it leveraged as a way where you take people that aren't being featured here or been featured too much here and you send them somewhere else and you let them work there for a while, I would be a fan of that. Like That was one of the great benefits of the territory system back in the day that is now gone from wrestling. Nebuk Sid, good old Disco Ben, asks, What does WWE need to do to make their next big star? His name is Roman Reigns and throw everything the hell behind him. Continue to book him in a dominant fashion. Continue to let Roman be Roman. Let him be the tribal chief. Let him be the head of the table. At some point in time, serve up the rock to him at WrestleMania. Serve up John Cena on a silver platter at SummerSlam. Like, you throw every... Brock Lesnar, if you want to. You throw everything at Roman Reigns. That's what you do. That's what you do! History Guy 007. Could you do a video where you book the invasion angle? I have always for years stayed away from that, like the play. Because in part, I thought, once I start, like I've got to go all the way through. It's probably going to have to be a video series. It's going to be a lot of time investment in that. And I'm not sure that I have the passion to do that. However, 2021 will represent 20 years since the invasion angle. If I'm ever going to do it, and I'm ever going to sit there and book the invasion angle, a portion of it, perhaps all of it, Maybe that's a video series we need for 2021. If you want to see that, you should take to the comments of this video and let me know. You should take to Twitter and tell me, I want you to book the invasion angle. Let me hear you. Let me know. Because if I do it, it's going to be a lot of time investment. But there's an interest there. But I need to know that it's worth it. Dave G123 underscore 456. Why do you hate Dino Bravo so much, and why is it a funny thing that he got blasted by the ma Mafia? How the hell is it not funny that he got blasted by the Mafia in his own home, 18 bullets, because he was involved in cigarette smuggling? How is that not funny as hell? And why do I hate Dino Bravo so much? Two reasons. One, he sucked, and two, he's dead. There you go. How about that? 
Some things just don't need to be quantified. You understand me, Dave? Some things are just an understood. Some things you just get. Some things are just a feeling. That's all I'm saying. Mojo underscore Jojo 1104. If the Macho Man came back to WWF after his time in WCW, who would you have liked to have seen him feud with? Uh, let's say, for example, he had come in in 97. Um, then you, you probably have guys like The Rock and Shawn Michaels and Austin, like... Yeah, I gotta go down the list of that roster of guys who I wanted to work with. If you're talking about like if he had come in like 2002, 2003, then again you're probably talking about uh, Shawn Michaels, Triple H. Ooh, ooh, yes, praise God, uh, Stephanie in a shark cage, Macho Man would be like, ooh yeah, kinky, dig it, <laughs> cream. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kurt Angle, like several, but oh man, could you imagine Macho Man in Triple H? Ooh, baby, give it to me, inject it straight into my veins, eat healthy or die. Who's the goat out of these three? Taker, Rocker, Austin. I think for the company, for how long he was there, how much money they made with him over the years, what he represented, it's got to be Taker. Like, Austin and The Rock certainly burned as brighter stars, but they burned incredibly white hot, and they faded out after a few years in terms of the company's perspective. You know, we could say about The Rock, like, he's transcended a lot of things, and now he's a, the biggest movie star, arguably, in the world, and he's more known, frankly, as the movie star that used to be a wrestler, not the wrestler who's also doing movies. Um, but I think it's Taker. Edsel 4, should Big E or Keith Lee be the winner of the 2021 Royal Rumble? Um, I don't know yet. Yes, when we get into January and I do that video where I tell you who I think should win, you'll find out then. And if they don't get Rock for WrestleMania 37, I think it should be Big E to face the Tribal Chief at Mania if they're planning to build them up thoughts. I uh, know, because if Big E wins the Rumble, I want him to win the title at Mania. I don't want Roman to drop the title at Mania. It is nowhere near time to do so. So as a result, I have no interest in that right now. HR Review 73. If Brian Pillman didn't pass away in 1997, do you think he would have been a huge star in the Attitude Era? Also, who would you have liked to have seen him face? Um, you know, probably most all of the top guys in that company at that time. You know, especially as you got into the Attitude Era. Uh, do I think he would have been a huge star? No. Do I think he would have been a critical mid-card to upper mid-card guy, kind of that second-tier guy that you work with them to either do something interesting to help fill the card out, or he's helping in that spot to elevate guys so they can face Rock Austin Taker, guys like that? Yes. So he would have been a star. I don't know if he would have been a huge star, but he would have been a star, I think. And Wrestling Rants is going to close out part one of this weekly Q&A by asking, does WWE even have anyone right now with the potential to become a mainstream megastar if Vince let them get to the level to be? Uh, yes, his name is Roman Reigns. That's the one. That's the guy. He's the tribal chief, the head of the table. But when you look at him, he makes guys scream and women cream. He sure as fuck looks like a movie studio's dream. That's all I'm saying. Like if you were saying and projecting like potential movie star down the road and you looked at that entire roster, it's got to be Roman. And the baby face turn that he's made as the tribal chief, the head of the table, like that only is helping that in the future. It's showing depth and versatility of performance and character it's showing skills that we didn't know he had before, frankly. Um, so that's the one right there to me. So thank you, everyone, again, for submitting your questions for part one of this weekly Q&A. Again, subscribe. 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 Complete your quest. Subscribe. Click the bell. What the hell? So you're notified of future videos. And check out part two of this weekly Q&A coming up Wednesday morning. And remember, I'm just like, this is the OTR Essential shit. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I almost lost my train of thought there. I'm getting old! See you then. Later.